first tonight, European arrest warrants. It's supposed to be a fast-track way of getting someone from one European country to another in order to stand trial for a serious crime or to serve a prison sentence. But as one man from Dorset has found out, there are real concerns at the moment that the system itself is being misused. Budapest, November last year. Michael Turner and his ex-business partner, Jason McGoldrick, have just been found guilty of fraud, allegations they strongly deny. Summing up, the judge says although guilty, they are not criminals and should not have a criminal record. This case has taken seven years to reach court, four months of which Michael and Jason were locked away in an ex-KGB prison without being charged under the powers of the European arrest warrant treatment that campaigners believe more appropriate for terrorists, murderers and rapists. It's a completely inappropriate use of the European arrest warrant. The danger for all of us who are citizens and residents of, of the United Kingdom is that we're all open to, to a prosecutor in an Eastern European country. The protections for the individual that we in Britain take for granted all disappear. Thanks for coming on because of course this is a fundraising exercise for us to uh, keep Michael's legal fees going in Hungary. Six months ago at the Castle Inn at Corf. The landlord, Mike's dad, is raising money for his son's continuing legal battle. Seven years earlier, Mike and Jason were running a marketing company in Hungary called Dream España, offering holidays in the Canary Islands. But after two years of trading, the company collapsed, leaving behind a debt of 18,000 pounds. They say they returned to the UK under the impression they'd followed all of the legal requirements of winding down the business. Three years ago, their story took a remarkable turn. I went on holiday with my wife to Monaco. She was heavily pregnant at the time. Uh, we arrived back in the UK after a fantastic time. And um, at passport control, they arrested me. Hello, Castle Inn. I got a phone call from Jason. You what? He rang me and said, there's a European arrest warrant out in your name. Oh, for crying out loud, what's going on then? You know, shock setting straight away. You think, well, you know, what is this? You, you instantly think, in a minute, I'm going to get a policeman walk through the door and arrest me. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'd never heard of a European arrest. I didn't even know what it was. And I thought, well, why would they want to arrest Michael anyway? The European arrest warrant was intended to be used explicitly to extradite people to serve a prison sentence or for the purposes of a criminal prosecution. But in Michael and Jason's case, a warrant had been served even though no decision had yet been made to prosecute. In 2001, the men lost a high court battle to avoid extradition and had no choice but to hand themselves over. When we got to Gatwick Airport, and we met the Hungarian authorities, that's when the nightmare really began. It was one of the darkest days of my life. They wanted to um, search us and handcuff us, which they did. And they believed, and so did the police when we arrived the other side, they believed that we had been caught and handed over. They were there prepared as if they were taking back desperate criminals. When they realised there were cameras present, the Hungarian officers reached into their, their black holders that they had with them to take balaclava masks set to cover their faces. And we were surrounded by dozens of armed police officers with dogs who cordoned off the entire section of the airport. We sat at the back of a plane. It was cordoned off. We were told not to speak one word. It was, it was not, not a nice situation. We were attached with a dog lead each and paraded through all of the travelers and the holiday makers waiting for their luggage. That, that's, that will always stick out in my mind because that was terrifying and embarrassing. And that's when it all sort of sank in that we knew we'd handed ourselves over, but there was no transfer of trust. 
Um, as soon as we got to Hungary, you know, we were um, caught criminals, I suppose. It was, uh, it's, it's quite a horrible feeling. We have serious concerns about the decision to use uh, these extradition proceedings against Michael and Jason. It seems to us incredibly disproportionate for such minor allegations to go to the cost and to put people through the ordeal of extradition proceedings, of uh, being shipped off to a foreign country, and we believe that they should have used other things, like working with the British police instead. Rather than being questioned, Mike and Jason were separated and locked up. We were taken to a police holding cell in the heart of the city and locked away in a very dark room with no, no ventilation, no taps, no toilet, nothing, for three days separately. I think the first day was pretty low. We were refused a telephone call home, and they tried to get us to sign paperwork when we arrived, and we were refused without our lawyer. Um, so it was a very tough situation. I was given assurances by the lead officer from Hungary, that uh, an Interpol officer, I was given assurances, don't worry, because when they get to Hungary, they'll be able to phone you straight away and let you know where they are and that they're okay. That's their right, they insisted so you don't have to worry. That didn't happen though, did it? No, we heard nothing. I didn't really understand what the extradition, the, the European arrest warrant requested from us. I believed at that time that I was going to spend two to three years in that one room without seeing the outside world. No contact with anybody, my wife, nobody. That was the worst moment. Three days later, they were taken to court where they assumed they'd be released on bail. But the judge thought differently. Instead, they were transferred to a former KGB high security prison whilst their case was investigated. You arrive in there at sort of three o'clock in the morning, you sort of look around the room and you think, well, is that the bucket, the toilet? You know, you know, where's the sink or anything like this? And, you know, you're really sort of lost. It's just so small, it was ridiculous. Just a square room. There was just no room to move, no room at all. Michael and Jason didn't need to be put in prison in the first place, uh, but they certainly didn't need to be put in those appalling prison conditions. Being locked down in your cell for 23 hours a day, that's inhuman, completely unnecessary. They didn't pose any danger to other prisoners. You know, you do start to lose your marbles a bit because you've got nothing to do. It's, it's shocking, shocking to the system. That's why some countries use pretrial detention as a way of trying to persuade people to plead guilty early on in a case. And you can't help but suspect that might have been what was the intention here, given the appalling treatment they suffered. There was just constant noise, constant screaming, constant shouting. You could hear guards beating people. Uh, it was just a, an awful place. Awful, awful place. There was a fictional character that uh, was banded about the prison. It was a guy called Mutu. He was this guy that was going to get you. And they used to taunt me with this uh, fictional character all the time. I had to think, next week, I'm getting out. You know, the next few days, something's going to happen, and I'm going to get myself out. Michael and Jason were eventually released from prison after 115 days without charge. Two years later, the trial has finally finished and the guilty verdict is sinking in. I'm deeply shocked um, by the decision today by the judge. Um, a little bit confused because obviously everything's done in Hungarian, uh, so I don't know the exact detail uh, of his summing up, but um, I have three days now to just consider um, whether I'm going to appeal the decision. Michael did decide to appeal. Despite the judge stating the men were not to be seen as criminals, he's determined to clear his name. In the UK, if the case were to be brought at all, it would have come up before the small claims court. The real issue here is the misuse of the European arrest warrant. The Hungarian authorities said that everything had been done by the book, and neither men who they pointed out had been convicted had complained during their detention. 
I think it's cases like Michael and Jason's which really gets the politicians to focus on the laws that they're signing up to. And I hope that the terrible experience that these young men have been through will demonstrate the need to fix our extradition laws because people shouldn't be put through the kind of unnecessary ordeal that these have suffered.